చదవబడినటువంటి వాక్య భాగం నుంచి మొత్తం సువార్త ఇరవై రెండవ అధ్యాయము ఒకటి నుంచి పద్నాలుగు వరకు మనం చూస్తున్నాం ఐ హ్యావ్ టైటిల్ బై మై సెస్ దిస్ ఈవినింగ్ ద మిస్టరీ ద మీనింగ్ అండ్ ద మ్యాండేట్ ద మిస్టరీ ద మీనింగ్ అండ్ ద మ్యాండేట్ వెన్ యూ రీడ్ దిస్ గాస్పల్ అకార్డింగ్ టు మ్యాథ్ యూ అండ్ బర్డ్స్ టు అండ్ చాప్టర్ ట్వంటీ టూ వెన్ యూ రీడ్ దిస్ స్క్రిప్చర్ పోర్షన్ మనకి చాలా తెలియనటువంటి అంశాలు లేకపోతే చాలా క్వశ్చన్స్ ఉన్నటువంటి పారాగ్రాఫ్ లేకపోతే పారబుల్గా మనం దాన్ని గమనిస్తూ వస్తున్నాం చదివినటువంటి వాక్య భాగంలో ఒక మంచి కథను లేకపోతే పారబుల్ ఒక మరి దేవుడు మరి అక్కడ ఉన్నటువంటి ప్రజలకు తెలియజేస్తున్నట్లుగా మనం గమనిస్తూ ఉన్నాం ఇరవై రెండవ అధ్యాయం ఒకటి నుంచి పద్నాలుగు వరకు మనం చూసినట్లయితే అక్కడ ఒక మంచి కథను మరి యేసుక్రీస్తు ప్రభు వారు వివరించి ఉన్నారు ఈ కథను మనం గమనించినట్లయితే మరి ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ వీ హ్యావ్ అలాట్ ఆఫ్ క్యారెక్టర్స్ అండ్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్స్ హ్యాపెనింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ వండర్ఫుల్ పారబుల్ అండ్ దెర్ ఈస్ అ వెడ్డింగ్ విచ్ ఇస్ హ్యాపెనింగ్ ఇన్ ద పారబుల్ the first thing i wanted to do tonight is to unfold the physical meaning of the mystery that is there in this uh, uh, in this passage mottamadiga man gamaninchinatlaite ee oka sannivesamlo oka vivaham jarugutunnadi there was a, a wedding that is happening in this parable and then what happens is pilavadina varu mari aa yokka vivahaniki lakapothe vindiki raanatla raakunnu unnatluga gamanistunna పిలవబడినటువంటి వారు మరి ఆ విందుకి రానప్పుడు మరి అక్కడ రాజు ఏం చేస్తున్నాడంటే మరి తన యొక్క పని వారిని వారిని తిరిగి ఇన్వైట్ చేయడానికి అక్కడ పిలిచినట్లుగా గమనిస్తున్నాం మరి తిరిగి ఇన్వైట్ చేసినప్పుడు వారు రానప్పుడు రెండవ మారు మరి ఆ యొక్క మరి విందుకి మరో రెండవ మారు పిలిచినట్లుగా మనం గమనిస్తున్నాం ఆ రెండవ మారు రెండవ మారు కూడా వారు త్రినీకరించినట్లుగా మనం గమనించినట్లయితే మరి మూడవ మారు కూడా ఆ ఇన్విటేషన్ వెళ్ళినట్లుగా మనం గమనిస్తున్నాము గమనిస్తున్నప్పుడు మూడవ మారు మరి పిలవబడినటువంటి వారందరూ ఆ యొక్క విందుకి వచ్చి ఉన్నారు ఆ యొక్క విందుకు వచ్చినప్పుడు అక్కడ జరిగిన విషయం ఏమిటి అంటే ఆ యొక్క రాజు మరి హీ సీస్ ఎ పర్సన్ వితౌట్ ద వెడ్డింగ్ గార్మెంట్ అండ్ దెన్ హీ ఆర్డర్స్ ఇట్ యాస్ ద క్వశ్చన్ వై డి యూ నాట్ వేర్ ద వెడ్డింగ్ గార్మెంట్ ఆ క్వశ్చన్ అడిగిన తర్వాత బికాస్ హీ కుడ్ నాట్ ఆన్సర్ ద క్వశ్చన్ హీ వాస్ టేకన్ అవే హీ వాస్ బౌండ్ అండ్ హీ వాస్ టేకన్ అవే అండ్ హీ వాస్ పుట్ ఇన్ ఇన్ అ ప్లేస్ వేర్ దెర్ ఈస్ గ్నాషనింగ్ అండ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దట్ స్టాఫ్ దట్ ఈస్ రిటర్న్ ఇన్ ద వర్డ్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ మన ఈ ఒక వాక్య భాగం మనం చదివినట్లయితే ఒక ఒక స్నేహితుడు నాతో మాట్లాడుతూ అని అన్నాడు డిడ్ యూ అండర్స్టాండ్ వాట్ ద స్క్రిప్చర్ ఈస్ సేయింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ వర్డ్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ లైక్ అన్ ఇన్వైటింగ్ అ ఫ్రెండ్ ఫర్ అన్ ఐస్ క్రీమ్ పార్టీ and just killing him or just humiliating him or stripping him or uh, or almost like a uh, 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 beating him to death uh, because he did not bring the spoon uh, for that ice cream party avidanga unnatluga mari ayaka snehithu natha panchavadam jarigindi because he did not bring the spoon to the uh, ice cream party mari ayana akka sattu vesinatluga ma friend natho cheppina appudu nijame kada nenu kuda adhe anukuna nijame kada this story is very very peculiar you call me to your party you call me to come i did not want to come i did not know that the whole scenario but you call me and when i come to uh, your house or your uh, your place and you kill me instead uh, what you do is you mistreat me you kill me just because i did not wear the wedding garment and that got from hindustan then i pondered on this uh, uh, this parable then there's with this lot of questions that came into my mind why is this parable a very unique parable and in fact you uh, to my utter shock or or surprise i did not see any explanation given to this parable by jesus or anybody else i accept uh, uh, by the outside uh, uh, commentators commenting on, on this particular parable but let me unfold you uh, with what uh, with what the culture let me take you back to jerusalem or let me take you back to the those times when jesus lived in that place and how the culture would be if you understand the culture of jewish people if you understand the times of jesus when he was living in 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 those times the culture uh, says that uh, when a king gives a wedding or when a king has a wedding a ceremony uh in, in in his kingdom what he actually does is he actually sends two invitations the two invitations were given uh for a wedding first uh to inform that the wedding is ready and the banquet is ready and they are supposed to come and the second invitation would go when all the food is ready and that is when uh, uh people normally attend there there were two invitations in the in, in the original cultural uh, uh ceremony that the wedding uh, happens in the in the place of uh, uh, the king's uh, king's place uh other in tarvata mari uh, there is also a ritual uh during those times when uh king if there is a wedding in the king's uh, uh king's palace there's also a ritual that uh, the whole expenses of the wedding is borne by the king ante akkada wedding ki kavalsina 20 samasthamana kuda kavalsina 20 kharchu mottamu kuda mari aa yokka raju varisnatlu ga mana chustunnam it also includes 
that uh, you would provide the garments for the wedding uh, uh, for those who do not have the wedding garments or those who do not have the garments. This is a ritual that's happening uh, in, in, the times of, uh, in the times of Jesus Christ and in the times of uh, the place where he's actually living. So if you understand in that terms, understand this parable is very easy to understand. So what's happening? There is a wedding and there is a king and there is a, a son, to the king, uh, son uh, of the king and then there is a wedding and the banquet is called and there are uh, invitations sent to all the people who are first invited to the wedding and then because one of the persons who is invited to the wedding doesn't have the wedding garment and uh, probably you can assume that this king must have provided the wedding garment to the one who is also sitting but he did not wear that wedding garment and hence it was an insult to the king and then probably he must have bound him and then threw him uh, in the dungeon or wherever. It's so simple to understand if you understand the culture of uh, uh, of the times that Jesus was living in and when you relate that uh, parable to the culture and what Jesus is actually uh, showing to the then people or the, or the Jewish people or the Israelites when he really was talking that's the uh, basic uh, thing when we unfold the mystery of, of this parable that we are showing but secondly I wanted to uh, talk about unfolding the spiritual mystery or the spiritual meaning of this mystery that means that we need to understand what is God actually talking about by saying uh, uh, but or by giving uh, some of the key key important things in this parable why God has to tell uh, or what is God actually showing in by the uh, by the elements that is there uh, in this in this chapter. Now, first of all, I would like to unfold the characters and the elements of this particular uh, uh, of this particular uh, of, uh, of this particular pa passage. Now, uh, unfolding the characters, there are a few characters. We have the king, we have the son, and then the elements uh, are, are what we can call or the situation is the wedding, and then there is a wedding banquet, and then there are uh, three invitations going basically for that wedding and the wedding garment and finally the mandate and these are some of the characteristics and the elements that we can actually uh, pick out from this passage number one the king number two the son number three the wedding number four the wedding banquet number five the three invitations that went and number six the wedding garment and number seven the mandate, the final mandate. If you can uh, figure out these few elements, we, we will talk about all of these elements in just a few minutes from now. But what actually uh, we have to keep in mind is God really does not explain few things in this, uh, in, in this particular parable. Number one, what actually caught my mind is the missing bride in this wedding. In, the, in, in, this, uh, uh, in this banquet, the, the, actually uh, the scripture starts, uh, if you see verse number 1 of, of chapter 22, the scriptures of the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared the wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to, uh, to who have been invited to the banquet. He is not explaining anything about uh, the bride in this particular wedding. We do not know at this particular point of time. But if we need to ponder on where is this bride or where is this missing bride, why did God actually uh, hid uh, from, uh, from, from, from us for ex excluding in this parable, if we need to understand, there are a lot of, lot of explanations given to why the bride is uh, not being given, who is actually the bride and uh, what, can be, what, what are the different, uh, different uh, thoughts that we can bring uh, to bring back the bride into this parable so that we understand who the, actually the guests are and who is the bride and, and what is Christ actually doing or what is God actually doing in the ceremony and all of that stuff. But let me give you three points. I don't want to go into details of, uh, of this particular uh, uh, of uh, the missing bride in this because it, it kind of deviates uh, for us if we really go into the deeper mystery of the missing bride because it kind of deviates what God is actually talking about. So I just wanted to jot down three points over there. The bride, uh, the missing bride uh, that we all will know or came to know or we can understand by the reading of the scriptures number one it could be the New Testament church or the New Testament covenant uh, people uh, to whom we, we are all uh, related to basically the church uh, what we know is the church is the bride of, of Christ that will be uh, married to number two there are also a lot of debates and a lot of uh, understanding uh, that the old covenant people uh, or the Israelites uh, to whom God is been talking throughout the scriptures to whom God has been given uh, given a lot of promises, and whom to whom all the prophets and all of those people have been talking to uh, is is the church of of the uh, of the Christ. That there is also that is that uh, uh, talk or discussion uh, happening across across the Christian world. Then the third um, uh, assumption or the third. Uh, 
the debate about this missing bride is also the New Jerusalem church, which we see in Revelation chapter uh, uh, 21 and so on. So basically, we do not want to spend too much time on where is this bride in this, uh, in this parable because it's kind of sidetrack you, the basic message uh, that God is trying to tell you. But we'll come back to uh, where the missing bride is when I uh, reach the end of the sermon. But let me go ahead and uh, uh, uncover some of the beautiful truths that God has put in this uh, in, in this parable. Let's go on. Uh, the other thing that we need to understand is there are three invitations that uh, God has sent through um, uh, to the people uh, or, uh, or and when we see in this parable there are basically three invitations. Normally when I said uh, the Jewish culture, when we talked about the Jewish culture in the beginning, when I told about the real scenario, there are only two invitations. Number one is the invitation when the wedding is ready or the banquet is ready. Uh, number two is when the food is ready or the banquet is, uh, uh, as we have seen in the verse, uh, uh, verse four and so, my oxen and the fat and cattle have been butchered and everything is ready, come to the wedding banquet. That is the second uh, invitation that normally the king sent to the servants. But in this, uh, in, in this parable, we see three uh, uh, invitations that went from, uh, from king through the servants. Number one is the invitation um, uh, if that, if, if that he sends uh, saying that the banquet is ready. And number two is the invitation that he sends that the dinner is prepared. And number three we see in verse five, uh, uh, sorry, in, in verse eight, he sent his servants, the banquet is ready, but those I've anointed did not deserve, go to the street corners and invite to the banquet uh, anyone you find, anyone you find, not just the invited in the in the beginning stages, but anyone who finds a cross. That's the third invitation, which is quite unusual. It doesn't happen all the time, or it doesn't uh, ever happen in the culture of Jewish. But here we see a very unique setting, or a very unique invitation, going to some people who are not at all invited in the first place, or who are not there in the plan in the first place. But we have seen that there are three invitations going. Now here are the main points that we can draw from these invitations. Number one, God says that these invitations are given by the servants, and the servants are nothing but the prophets. The prophets have given the message of, uh, of the redemption plan that God had. The prophets have been telling that how to repent from the sins and turn towards God. The prophets have been warning them of the calamity that's going to happen if they turn their faces away from God and so on and so forth. We see all the minor prophets, major prophets giving uh, time and again a lot of instruction to the people of Israel. But nothing happened and no one have repented. There are a lot of prophets in the Bible who have preached so many years but not even a one soul turned towards God. And a lot of that happening through the first, uh, uh, first invitation that God has sent. Number two, the invitation that Jesus Christ uh, by himself when we came when he came to the world he was giving an invitation and he was weeping over Jerusalem and he was weeping over the people of Israel and he was showing the right path if only Jerusalem can now know what brings its peace uh, then uh, actually the Redeemer would actually redeem that the, the, that's what it says in uh, it says when Jesus was entering into Jerusalem uh, during the last week of his uh, uh, of his stay on this on, on this earth. So in this way, the second invitation was given by Jesus Christ, His Son, and and how we read in Isaiah chapter six or chapter seven uh, that the, the that the sign will be shown, that the miracle will be shown, that the virgin will bring forth the son into this world. That is a sign that God uh, God is, God has in a plan of redemption for the human human man uh, human people or mankind. That is the second invitation. And what happened as we see uh, in, in this invitation, they have, ranks, uh, they, they have killed the people, they have killed the prophets, and, and in a similar way they have killed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who became eventually the Passover lamb. And the, finally, the third set of people who went for invite uh, invitation is the people, uh, and uh, those are the people who are ministering to the church, who are ministering to the people uh, who are uh, not earlier in the plan or in the redemption plan or in what uh, uh, or in uh, or in the covenant old covenant plan. The, the, the people are read or reached by those people who are filled with the Holy Ghost and through the Holy Spirit and through the law of grace and through the church and through the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now you and I are being invited into this plan of redemption through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now we see the invitations are three, but that basically uh, will help us to understand the three functions of the Holy Ghost, uh, the, the, the three functions of the Trinity. First to the prophets, 
the voice of God is heard, second through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who have come into this world to shed his blood as a Passover lamb. And three, the Holy Spirit is working through the church and through the, to, to reach the Gentiles and to reach the people who have not accepted this invitation to come into the banquet, to come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Here we see that the Trinity is in work and here we see that the redemption plan is not just to the Israelites, is not just to the people chosen through the Old Covenant but it also to the people who are chosen by the new covenant or through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb. He is pouring out of the spirit. He is pouring out uh, his spirit on all the people equally so that each and every one of us will be in that saving plan of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of whom we serve and of whom we love and of whom we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we take him as a savior uh, of, of, our, uh, of our lives. Number three, we, we look at the garment now. Now we have seen that uh, there, uh, there, there are uh, three, uh, one unique unique invitation went out uh, to, to welcome into the banquet. Number two, we, are, we now will see the garment. Now we have seen that the people are invited into the wedding banquet, the people are flooding into the wedding banquet, and there are lots and lots of people who are uh, coming into the banquet and to enjoy the feast and to enjoy what, whatever is being served there. But at that particular point of time, when everybody thinks and everybody sees that things are going normal, then comes in the king. And then when he is glancing through the crowd, when he is glancing through the people who are there in the banquet, he now sees a person and that person does not have the garment. You and I probably will be chosen. You and I probably will know the G know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You and I are probably in that banquet hall. You and I probably are in the redemption plan. But here is something very unique that God reminds us. Here is something very unique that God has to uh, has to tell each and every one of us who 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 is being a plan, uh, being a part of that plan. Now here is the garment. Now we need to understand what kind of garment this person is wearing in the congregation. We need to understand what made this person uniquely identified by the king. He, we have to understand what actually made the king of kings who can see throughout the whole people who are there in the banquet that made a difference when he sees. Now the garment that he is wearing, as we can see, the clothes that he is wearing could be probably because of the clothes, uh, because of what the worldly, worldly nature will help people to wear, what, what the sinful nature will help people to wear, what help uh, the, 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 the sinful nature that you and I are born in with. If you turn, to, turn with me to scriptures, if you look at Jude 23, Please turn with me to Jude 23. The, if you look into that verse, it will tell you the, 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 the basic of, of flesh that we are wearing. Let's turn to Jude and verse 23. <laughs> In my Bible it says like this, snatch others from the fire and save them to show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing sustained uh, or stained by corrupted flesh. This is a clothing stained by our corrupted flesh. You and I need to recognize that this flesh even as we live in this flesh, this flesh is a corrupted flesh. That is why it doesn't have a, an eternal life. Uh, that uh, eternal life, it has to go. It is dust. It has to be mixed with the dust. And that, with that clothing, we can never enter into the glorious presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Secondly, we see this clothing is not just corrupted flesh, but it is also an immortal flesh. If you see those beautiful scriptures being written. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 5, uh, verse uh, 2 to 4 onwards. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2 and uh, 2 to 5 uh, verses, please. Manu Digambarila Mukaka. Manu Digambarila Mukaka. Kabati. Paralokumundiwachu. Paralokumundiwachu. Dini Paina Darinchana Pekshin Chichu. Dini Lo Mulguchunam. Dini Lo That's what the scripture says. Thank you, sister. That's what the scripture says. The clothing that we are in is a mortal 
clothing. We need to we need to change that to come into the presence of God. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we are not found naked. You and I, when we do not change the clothing that we have on on our flesh, it is very clear to our Lord how we how we come naked into His presence. And that is what the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ reminds us. Our clothing is a corrupted clothing. Our clothing is nothing but a corrupted flesh. Our cloth is nothing but a mortal flesh. And thirdly, our clothing is a clothing that is full of sin. It is blotted by sin. I just can't uh, uh, remember. But uh, if you turn our scriptures to Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 3, please. Yeah. Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 3. Yehoshua. Malina Vastramul Darinchanavade. Do the Samakamulo Nilobari Unaga Chalandi. What can Mishaka Alachin Chadam? Just Joshua is not the Joshua who is a, uh, who is the descendant uh, after Moses. This Joshua is different. Now here is Joshua. When he uh, then he showed me Joshua the high priest. He is the high priest. He is standing before the angel of the Lord. Remember, angel of the Lord he is not standing anywhere else but beside the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at right hand to accuse him. Verse two, please. <laughs> Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes. Even as you and I are sitting here tonight, we have to admit that if you do not possess or if you do not have those garments, if you do not have Christ in your lives, our clothing is nothing but filthy rags. Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood beside the angel. The angel said, see I have taken away your sin and I will put rich garments on you. If the <coughs> sin is in our lives, if the sin, whatever we have in our lives still remains, even though you are, you are a follower of Jesus Christ, even though you love him more, even though you know him more, even though you pray, come to church and do all the fastings or whatever you do, if that sin that whatever is there in our lives is not cleansed and we put on those garments cleansed from that sin you and I will be called as the same way how Joshua was called that you are wearing those filthy clothes tonight that is the condition of that man and you and I can recognize how a person who walks into the church who walks into into the sanctuary when we are all dressed and we can figure out if somebody is not wearing right clothes if a beggar comes down into this aisle or if he walks onto the door and he doesn't have a clothes and he is shabby looking and he has his beard grown he hasn't taken bath for a long time his heads are locked and his uh, and his clothes stinking we all can know even though there are lots of people we all can recognize that one person who is not uh, having the right clothes to be wore or to be using when he comes to the sanctuary or when he comes uh, into our congregation exactly the same way poignantly god says that our clothes are nothing but so filthy i need to take out those clothes and put you on the right uh, right track Ezekiel chapter 16 beautifully describes uh, how God saw Israel, how God saw the status of people of Israel, how God saw that little baby who has just born, who is not yet separated from the umbilical cord, not yet been given complete life on this earth. God saw at that particular stage and we see how, how that beautiful, beautiful scriptures written of how the redemption plan have started, how God loved us, loved us to such an extent that when he saw us naked, he came first 
and he wanted to change our clothing he wanted to change how we look he wanted to change the beauty that we are actually possessing i let us read those beautiful verses now uh, uh, starting from verse 4 it says on the day when you were born your cord was not cut nor you were washed with water to make you clean and it goes on to say then i passed by and saw you clicking kicking about your blood and as you lay there in your blood i said live you are about to die but i said live i made you grow like a plant of the field you knew up and de develop and become the most beautiful of the jewels it goes on it goes on to say later i passed by and i looked at you and you're old enough for love i spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your nakedness and I gave you the solemn oath and entered into the covenant with you declares the sovereign Lord and you became mine I bathed you with water washed with blood put ointments on you I clothed you with an embroidery dress and put leather sandals on you and verse 13 it says you become beautiful a rose to be a queen that is a beautiful description that God, when He chose His people, and when God, when He cleanses people, when God puts on His robe, His robe, or, or His clothes of the pe of people, people shine and become beautiful, a rose to be like a queen. Dear friends, clothing is important when we come into the presence of God. Clothing is important. The clothing is not the ones that we are wearing right here. But the clothing is inside what we are wearing inside. The clothing that God provides when He washed you from that womb. And He washed you when you are born. And He washed you when you are left abandoned without any help. God says, where is the garment today? God says, God reminds, did you put on that garment that I have given? very dangerous question that you and I have have to put it's a Jewish cultural maybe to provide the garments to come into the wedding banquet but it's also the culture of the God of Israel God of Jacob God of Abraham to give their garment to each one of us who come to the saving grace and the knowledge of the glory of God Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27 it says all who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ when we are baptized when we are accepted the gracious salvation plan into the salvation plan of Jesus Christ and when we are baptized in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost <coughs> we clothe ourselves with Christ now we carry the Christ to the banquet hall now we carry the Christ to where the wedding is taking place and then we can be assured that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, when He comes, we can be all be found worthy into His presence. Isaiah 61 10 also figures out. Isaiah 61 tells also tells us how I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in the God, for He hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. He has covered me with the cloth of salvation, garments of salvation, and the robe of righteousness. He has given, our God has, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, has a ritual of giving those clothes to all those people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. So that our nakedness, our filthiness, and our dirt, whatever is there on this flesh, the immortal flesh, the incorruptible flesh, and corruptible flesh, and all the sinful flesh, God takes it out and gives us a beautiful clothing. How he has been dressing up Israel, how has he blessing up the people of the covenant, of the old covenant, he would do right now to every one of us. He is willing to give that clothing so that we will be all clothed for the glorious wedding that's going to take place uh, in, in, in heaven. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10 says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge of the image of the one who has been, uh, who created, uh, uh, of that created him. And have put on a new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. God in his own image 
He has created us. In Genesis we read how, we, how the Trinity created us in His own image. How much more He's willing us willing to give the garment of his own garment of his own stature to all of us who accept Jesus Christ who accept that God of God of Abraham God of Israel and God of Jacob uh, uh, into our lives and into the redemption plan the blood of the lamb the Passover lamb that has been shed for the remission of the whole sins of this mankind years ago when when we were in India Probably many of you were not in India at that time. Probably we were there three, some year, five to six years back. There is this minister. His name is Mother of Sindhya. He used to be the secretary of BCCI, Board of Cricket Control of India. He used to be the civil aviation minister for the government. At that time, Congress was the government and he used to serve in the government of India as a civil aviation minister and I recollect when he performed a marriage to his his daughter he actually sent invitations to all of his family members and friends and wherever he knows but with each invitation he made sure all the outstation people who are supposed to come to the wedding he made sure that there is a flight ticket Involved, included in the invitation that he has sent. Now he has made sure that everybody would come into this wedding, but he has also made sure that the travel is paid. He has also made sure that, that the first class travel be, been given to, uh, to all the people who are going to attend. I know of that particular invitation. I also know that, that uh, another invitation by another politician in which one gram of gold is being given to every invitees, to every invitation card, there is a one gram of gold being also being uh, given into those invitations. I never, never, ever saw, if you know, you can tell me that any person has ever given the wedding garment along with the invitation card to come into the banquet or to attend the wedding. Never. Nobody would know what size garments that you are wearing. Nobody would know how many people and what sizes of each other people would be, uh, would be used in, in those wedding garments. Nobody knows, but only one banquet, only one wedding that I know that each of us will be given garments to wear. He's been given the garments to wear when we accept that Jesus Christ and his righteousness, his robe of righteousness and his garment of salvation to wear, to come into the saving grace of the knowledge of the glory of God, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, I'm going to end the mandate. We have seen the mystery. We have seen the meaning. Now the mandate, very important. The mandate is very, very important. Now the king comes. He sees the man with the, with, with, with the clothing which is not appropriate for the wedding. Now he asks, now with the, let's, let's read that, that, that particular verse here. Chapter 22, verse number 13. Chapter 22, verse number 11. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed the man there not wearing the wedding clothes. He asks a question, poignant question. If he has any answer to his question, friend, he asked, how did you get in here without the wedding clothes? The man was speechless. That essentially means that you and I know that invitation. You and I must have been invited or taken that invitation very seriously. You must have uh, been happy about the situation or the invitation. You have accepted the invitation and you went all the way to the saving grace of the knowledge of the glory of God. But there was a question, where is your wedding dress? It's very important that God gives us those wedding dress. And then the king come, told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What a judgment. The mandate given by the king, the mandate given by God the Father who does not recognize the cost of the garment that Jesus Christ has provided to all those people who believed in him. If you and I do not uh, recognize the pain that, that the price God has given through Jesus Christ his son for the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness that we need to wear to come into the presence of God 
That is the situation. That is the outcome. And that is the mandate. No matter what, no matter what, if you are a Jew or a Gentile or a Greek or a Hindu or a Muslim or whoever it is, the mandate is the same today, yesterday and tomorrow when we come into the, uh, into the presence of God. If you and I just accept the invitation, if you and I just accept that there is a banquet going on and just go to the banquet without that, that particular salvation or that particular righteousness that only God can give. There is no way, no way of justification. The Bible tells us that in that, in that righteousness of Christ that gives us, the righteousness of us is fulfilled. Isaiah reminds us that our righteousness is filled in rags. Romans tells us that in Christ that there is an end of righteousness and in Him is only the righteousness that is being given to all of us. God remembering His covenant, not just to Israelites, not just to the people of, of the old covenant. In Genesis chapter 26 and verse 4 it says, In thy seed, in thy seed, basically talking about Abraham and his seed, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. All the nations, no matter what, U.S., U.K., India, wherever it is, all the nations will be blessed because of this one man who has demonstrated that he will be faithful to God. And that is the covenant that God reminds us. That is the covenant that God remembers us in sending the third invitation, in sending the third invitation to all the people, no matter what, if you are in the covenant, not covenant, in covenant, out covenant, old covenant, or the new covenant, God sends that invitation right now. If you are sensitive enough to, to that call of Jesus Christ, he is telling that he is opening his arms all wide open all the day long. Shall we turn to Romans chapter 9 to see that beautiful words. It's also inscribed in, in Isaiah. Let's turn to Romans chapter 10 and verse 21. This is what it says. But concerning Israel, he says, all day long I have held up my hands. To a disobedient and upstate people. He's still waiting and he still know that somebody will come. And he's still giving time to those people who are invited to come into the saving grace. To come into that banquet. To saving grace of the knowledge of the glory of God. Number one, the mandate. The mandate is because God did not see a, 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 a heart of obedience in that person. God did not see a heart that uh, uh, of respecting what actually is been uh, is been actually happening. He saw a deliberate insulting in the man who did not wear that garment. He saw a denouncing of the sovereignty of the presence of God, or sovereignty of the Lord God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If he sees that in, uh, uh, disobedience, if sees that it has been insulted, now he gave you the garments. If you do not wear those garments, which is required for the wedding it is an insult for the king who has actually purchased that garments for you and I through the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross it's very very important my dear friends to have the garments being worn when it comes to the uh, to the wedding banquet hall second Peter verse 3 word chapter 3 and verse 9 says many are invited but few are chosen he doesn't desire that anyone should perish, but all will come to repentance. That is the reason why the third invitation is sent. That even though you are not in that plan, even though we are not in that plan, many of us here are Hindus. Many of us here do not know Jesus Christ earlier. Many of us do not, do not know this religion anymore. Many of us who do not know this God earlier, but came to the saving grace just because of the third invitation, just because that God has included all of us in the saving plan through Jesus Christ, through his blood, through the blood of the Passover lamb was shed on the blood, uh, on the cross, every drop of the blood would purchase that garments of salvation, that robe of righteousness that you and I have to wear when we come to this, when it comes to the wedding banquet and the banquet hall. The mystery, the meaning, and we also saw the mandate. Let's come back. Let's come back, whether it is the bride or the body. Let's come back to where we have started. Is it the bride or the body? You might be telling Anil, it's about Israel. You might be telling Anil, the words that you've read, it might be because of Israel. Even in Romans chapter 10, we have seen that to Israel, he's saying that he's opening his eyes wide, his hands wide open to all the nations who are rejecting him. His, his hands are wide open to come into the saving grace 
of the knowledge of glory of God. You might be saying though, that is that that is the Old Testament that whatever you 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 are reading, you are inscribed on the palms of my hand. It might be Israel. God is might be talking to Israel, but you have and you and I have to understand that now are the times that we need to understand that the saving grace is given to each one of us. Turn with me please to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. Why all these things happen? How all these things happen? And who are these? And why are we living here? We can understand through Paul's letter to Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11 please. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings to us on whom the fulfillment of the ages have come. Meaning that even though Israel, thankfully when we will go into the Bible studies of Romans chapter 9 or chapter 10 and chapter 11 in these years, in this year to come, we would understand how God is not done with Israel, how God is not done with the saving plan of Israel, how God is not done yet with completely restoring back the people of the old covenant, how God is not done in restoring back all the Jews into the Jerusalem, how often we pray that Psalmist reminds us we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, how often our Savior himself in Matthew, that he cried when he was entering into the Jerusalem, he cried for Jerusalem saying, oh Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, how often I have tried as the hand gathers a chicken but you are not willing. How often you must have been reminded that the prince of peace is on the globe and that you would understand your actual name. Salem means peace. Salem means peace. Jerusalem is actually the city of peace but the peace is now out of the city but it did not realize that the prince of peace was in the city and that is how the desolate state of Jerusalem has happened. But when you read Romans chapter 9 chapter 10 and chapter 11 when all the restoration will come to Place, will come to take place in the in the near future you would also understand because that they have rejected because they have taken their own time the, the, the battle is passed to all the Gentiles and we came into the saving grace of the knowledge of the glory of God and we are becoming a part of jealousy to Jews and they are jealous because that we have accepted their God they are jealous because we are accepted as a saving grace as as his own people they will be jealous and one day they will all come to the glory of the knowledge of the glory of God and that is the plan of, of God but Roman what Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11 reminds Paul reminds us all these things happen because as an example for you and I to come to the knowledge of the glory of God you and I to come to that particular uh, 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 warning that we need to wear Christ in our lives we need to wear that saving grace in our lives that only blood of Jesus Christ can give on the cross of Calvary which he has shed on, uh, on the day of Passover uh, 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 2000 years uh, ago for all of the remission of our sins. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 11 also confirms that. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 11. Ittivani lo. Ittivani Christ is all and in all. And that is the plan of the redemption that God has designed by shedding the lamb of the Passover on the cross. You might ask like whether it is bride or the body. Is the church bride or is the church body of Christ? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You and I, if you are the body of Christ, it, can, it cannot be changed to bride or if you are the bride, you cannot be changed to body, whatever. That's not the point of this particular passage. But the point of the particular passage is we need to have that clothing. We need to accept that invitation. We need to have that clothing all the time because we never know when the Savior is coming. And when he sees that we are not in the right attire, that he is going to ask you, where is your attire that you have obtained in Christ Jesus? Now coming down to the actual mystery, this is what I do not understand. This is what all the scholars do not understand. This is what the mystery that is there in the scripture 
nobody would understand this is there in the whole book whatever ever i'm having right now that nobody could understand this is one mystery that nobody has an answer and the one answer that we are all are expecting would we'll see one day when we see him face to face we can ask this question somebody said going into mars is a problem going into mars is a problem it can be mathematically be solved some devices can be devised some spaceship can be built something can be done to reach mars and see if there is life existing on it something can be built so that man can land his foot on mars but one thing nobody would understand it is still a mystery the falling into love falling into love is a mystery nobody could ever give an answer to it nobody can have a way to explain how you fall into love with your spouse or with anybody else in your life in the same way nobody can explain why the third invitation is given nobody could explain why god has stretched out his love to all the sinners to all the people who are not there in the plan to all the people that he has created god in his own image when he created man he then and there itself had the redemption plan to save him to bring him to the glory to bring him to the place where he lives to bring him to, into eternity all the people he has actually uh, uh, brought out to the face of the world in that we read in john chapter 3 verse 16 all of us know for god so loved the world nobody understand why he did god so loved the world nobody understood why he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life song of solomon verse chapter 2 let's read verse 4 Song of Solomon, chapter two and verse four. Atharu na vindhasalak thodu. Atharu na vindhasalak thodu kani. Poeno. Poeno. Namida. Namida. Prema na dwajum gaye thelo. Prema na dwajum gaye thelo. He has taken me into the banquet hall, and his banner over me is just love. It's just love. Nobody can explain why. Nobody can explain how. Nobody can explain the reason behind it. It's just simply given. the banner over me and i with that banner can attend the wedding with the garment of salvation the robe of righteousness that we have in Christ Jesus our lord revelation chapter 9 19 and verse 9 revelation chapter 19 and verse 9 there we see this wedding there we see the actual details of the wedding happening there we will not go into the details of the wedding we will not talk about who is the bride is we will not talk about anything else but there is something which is written in chapter 19 and verse 9 we will look into it mariyu atru naato ilaam cheppenu mariyu atru naato ilaam cheppenu gorre pilla pendle venduku gorre pilla pendle venduku pilu padina vaaru thannilani raayemo pilu padina vaaru thannilu ani raayemo those who are chosen those who are accepted or those who are called blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb blessed are those and god reminds how he has done in the old covenant with abraham blessed are those nations blessed are those nations just because of your seed i'll bless the whole nation the blessing is there the invitation is there it's only it's up to us that we need to accept here is the application part of my message here is that here we need to accept the invite we have the invitation that is actually given by grace we have the garment which is being bought with the blood of jesus christ this garment would save you from all unrighteousness this garment would save you from all sinful desires this garment would save you from all the lusts of the world that is the garment which is bought with the price on the cross of calvary by jesus christ and now the benefit is eternal now the benefit is eternal you can enjoy the presence of god forever there is no beginning and there is no end there it is going to be forever and the best of all it is it is free it is free no money nothing to be done you don't have to go somewhere else you don't have to do something else the invitation is there it's just a banquet karma to grace.com i just keep reminding of this person mahendra saigal he used to tell something he says if your search for god is started and if you have found jesus christ he is the right path and he you will find when your search is true even though if you do not find him even though if you do not find him friends please listen you have you 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 have lost nothing even though you do not find you have lost nothing you won't lose anything it's just an acceptance it's just an invitation you just get free clothes you just get a uh, free right uh, free righteousness clothes of righteousness 
it's free. It's, a, it's up to us to accept the invitation and wear on this robe of righteousness, a robe of salvation, and be a part of the banquet and enjoy. Psalm 37 verse 25 says, I have been young and I have been old. I have never seen the righteous go begging for bread. And that is a blessing that God has given us, remembering the old covenant that he has done with Abraham, that by and because of your seed, I'll, I'll bless the whole nation. And that is a blessing in Revelation chapter 19. And verse 9 says, Blessed are those who are invited to that wedding supper. May Lord add his blessing, give him grace, give us grace to understand that invitation that God sends to us. In Romans, we see that he's, he's spreading out his hands so that you and I can come to the saving grace. We also see in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 that he is knocking the door. He is knocking the door and anyone who would listen to that voice would come and he would come and stop and dine with you. That is what the Lord says and reminds us that acceptance needs to be there. The wearing of the clothes needs to be there to enjoy the eternal benefits which comes to spirit. May the Lord add his blessings. May the Lord give us that grace to understand that invitation. May the Lord give us that grace to understand the Passover lamb, the blood of the Passover lamb who is shed on the blood to buy those garments means for you and I to be presented a marvelous and abundant, sinless and a blameless uh, people when, when we all come to the wedding banquet of the wedding of the Lamb of Jesus Christ.